Hello, hello, I'm Pastor Sean, and I have your word for the day. We're in Luke 23, 39 through 43, right after Jesus has been betrayed, he's been wrongly imprisoned, he's been beaten half to death, and now he's hung on a cross. One of the more interesting passages in the Easter story, we find out that Jesus wasn't the only one being hung on a cross that day. To his right and to his left were two criminals who were being executed right alongside him. And their interactions with Jesus actually teach us everything we need to know about Jesus and salvation. Check it out. Luke 23, 39 through 43 says this. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested. Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. Two people with wildly different interactions with Jesus and only one of them were saved. Let's look at the scoffing criminal. Criminal. He rejected Jesus. Worse, he mocked Jesus. But truly, he was no different than any of the people who put Jesus on that cross. You see, everyone around him was expecting the Messiah, the Savior, to come and free them from their enemies. They thought if Jesus was the Messiah, he would come on a white stallion with a sword in hand ready to destroy. They were expecting a lion, but instead, Jesus came as a lamb. And I believe the misunderstanding came from people's separation of the physical and spiritual. People wanted Jesus to destroy their physical enemies, other people. But Jesus came and put their spiritual enemies to rest. He did come and conquer, but it was sin and death, our ultimate enemies, that he destroyed first. This scoffing criminal got it wrong, as so many people often do. Now take the second criminal, the repentant one. This criminal, with dying breath, rebuked the man who is mocking Jesus, and then he does two things that we should hold as tight as we can. He first affirms Jesus' sinless life by saying, this man hasn't done anything wrong. And then he affirms Jesus' kingship and godhood. He recognized that Jesus is king by saying, when you enter your kingdom, Jesus, remember me. And at that moment, I bet that man was expecting Jesus to rebu rebuke him back. I bet he was expecting Jesus to scoff at him like the other criminal had scoffed, uh, scoffed Jesus. I mean, he was hanging on a cross and he affirmed his own guilt. His whole life has probably been a struggle. He could never catch a break. I mean, that's why he was there in the first place. He probably did bad things to survive. It was probably all this criminal ever knew. And this hardened criminal was going out on a desperate limb probably not sure why he believed this man was king, but he knew in his heart with his last dying breath that he needed to ask Jesus to remember him. And Jesus' response is everything we could ever ask for. I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. You know what this man's story tells us? It tells us that when it comes to ours or anyone else's salvation, we have nothing to do with it. The repentant criminal didn't pray a sinner's prayer. He didn't even confess all of his sins. He just affirmed that he was a sinner. He didn't get baptized. He didn't have time to produce spiritual fruit. He didn't have any works alongside his faith. He didn't speak in tongues. This man showed us what our role in salvation actually is, and it's nothing. Romans 10, 9 affirms this. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We are as useful to our salvation as a man hanging from a cross who's lived a dirty and vile life. We're all sinners in need of Jesus. And while we sin, we speak with dying breath, and we ask Jesus to remember us, because we can't do anything to redeem ourselves. You see, our sin keeps us tied down and tied to that cross, but Jesus is the one who frees us. And he assures us with his spirit that we too are saved and can live a life free from the sin shackles of death. A lot of times we take our faith and we overinflate our own importance. But the beauty of the cross is just how helpless 
sinful, evil we actually are and how much Jesus loved us anyways. Enough to die for you on a cross. Enough to die for me. Enough to die for that criminal who couldn't do any good work in his last moments of life to prove his faith. And right now that criminal is living the perfect life in heaven with our Savior. How much more will he free you right now while we still live? What sin shackles and crosses are you nailed to that Jesus has either already freed you from or is freeing you from right now? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a moment today and just pray this simple prayer that reflects this repentant sinner. Here's what it says. Jesus, I deserve death. I deserve the cross. But you have shown me mercy. You've lived a perfect, sinless life and yet took the punishment that I deserved. Remember me in your kingdom, for you are king of my life. Amen. Calvary Easter's coming up pretty fast. We'll see you on that Saturday and that Sunday. I love you a lot. Have an awesome day.